Hey traders, this is Ron Haydat, Market Tamer. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. As always, nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Trading stocks and options involves risk and specific financial issues should always be addressed with your financial advisor. The markets took it on the chin today after comments that there is no trade tariff deal. But there really wasn't yesterday either. It was just one of the situations where there's a 90-day hiatus. They're going to revisit. Of course, it could all go bad. And of course, it could all go good. We don't know yet. But boy, the market didn't seem to like it today. It seemed way overdone to me because there just wasn't a massive material change if you think about the reality of where we are. Apparently, some traders did, though. Now, volume is interesting here. You're gonna, if I zoom in a little closer here on this daily chart of the diamonds, which is the Dow ETF, this was yesterday. Big spike in volume over the past couple of days. Got up to almost 10 million shares. Now, we do have a black candle, which just means we closed lower than where we opened, but it's not red because we still finished higher than the previous day. That's not bad. So, yeah, there was some selling, but there was still buying. Today, it was just sell, 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 sell. Once we got towards the middle of the day, it just fell out of bed. There was a late day bounce, but it, it really didn't matter. It rolled right back over. My point is the volume dropped. Almost half of yesterday's volume to a point. There wasn't a lot of conviction behind the volume today. So I'm curious to see what happens tomorrow. As of right now, if this is what, if this is what the market wants to do, we're boxing this. Really interesting. We get up to this level up here, 262, we roll over. Otherwise, right now we're watching support, which is interesting because I said, if we roll over, watch those lows, right? Man, I didn't think it would be the next day, that's for sure. Short term, the bulls do not have the edge. We just lost the 50-day SMA in orange, the 20-day EMA in red. Right now, this blue is an eight-day EMA. Usually it's a five-day, but it's an eight-day for tonight's video. Everything was broken. Only the 200 stands in its way. I'm not really worried about the 200 a whole lot because of the box that we have going on here. The W pattern still holds, but we get some further moves down. We're going to have to ignore that. And really, trading range now takes over. All right, how about the S&P, which have a bullish position via the spiders? Here's SPY down 3.24%, 9 bucks 90 essentially 90 S&P points. We were above the 50-day, but we didn't take out this high yet. Remember, when we take out that high from November 7th on the SPY, that's what gives us the shot up here from a probability and technical perspective. Never happened. We rolled right back over. Same thing on the Dow. We're now range bound. If I bring in the Qs, down 3.84%, they were clinging to the 50-day yesterday. Today, you've given up, but today's volume was greater than yesterday. And if I go back to the spiders, what do we see here? Today's volume, greater than yesterday. Go back to the diamonds, it was less. So only the Dow experienced of the big three, less volume today. Now, if I go back to the Qs, where's the target? Those lows back on November 20th. We bring in the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, down over 4%, never got above the 50 day, never got above the previous high. This one stays range bound. Target is back down at those lows, you know, ballpark 146-ish, 145-ish. And if we look at MDY, they were down 3.5%, right back below moving averages. They're going to be in a range here, too. Now, if I look at the VIX, dollar sign VIX, big surge today, 26% plus move higher. But it, too, you can sort of see is a bit range bound. So overall, how do we sit going into the rest of the week? We'll use the S&P as the proxy here. The markets are closed tomorrow. And they're back open Thursday and Friday, so we have two days. So this can sort of settle down and see how it plays out. Right now, day-to-day, -day, bears have the edge, but we're in trading zones, trading boxes, trading ranges. If we take out those previous lows, and frankly, from this point, it's one more day like today, that would open up the door potentially for more selling, and that would be worrisome. Then this would just be a ledge that we were bouncing around on, and we can go right back down off another cliff type of situation. It's too early to get there. I'm just highlighting the points of the downside to watch for. Upside, everything from yesterday's video holds. We need to take out those previous highs. We want the 50-day broken, which we did on some indexes. We want the previous highs broken on a closing basis to signify higher highs, higher lows. We just didn't get that across the board yet. We tripped by signals, but never broke out above those key areas. Now, one thing we've been talking about, where's the money going? Is it just flowing out of the stock market under people's beds or what? Well, today for the first time, the TLT actually jumped 1.67% on a nice spike in volume. It wasn't epic, 
it's 18 million shares. If I take you back two years, just to give you some context, you know, that little spike there was not an epic spike in volume, right? And we didn't finish near the highs of the day. So today some money flowed into bonds, but in my humble opinion, it's nothing to shout from the rooftops at all and say, oh dear Lord, this is the mother of all tops. There's a shift. I personally don't see it. It was a one day move so far in TLT. Well, maybe they ran to gold, right? Nah, not really. 0.61% and volume was lackluster. Yes, if I zoom in, we can say, hey, it's trying to close at new highs. There was no follow through. It didn't close higher at the highs of the day. There was none of that. There was no volume spike. So yeah, gold had a little bit of a bounce, but it's nothing extraordinary. Now let's take a quick look at some individual stocks here. Here's Amazon. I want to go back into six month daily charts. What's interesting about Amazon is it did finish down over a hundred bucks. That's big, right? Nearly 6%, but we're even, we didn't close below the eight day or the 20 day. All we did is basically filled our gap. Technically, Amazon's still bullish on the daily chart. That's how technical analysis works. It's above the five day. It's above the 20 day. Looking out five and 20 days, it's still bullish. Even after today's carnage, how about Google? Not so lucky. Google did have some follow through yesterday, but it could not close above the 200 day in purple. Today, we are back below all moving averages. Targets back down towards a thousand to a thousand and a quarter. Apple's in the news saying that they're going to have to potentially lower prices of phones. They're giving incentives for people to trade in their phones. But Apple lost 4% today. I don't know. I would think that if Apple's really having a lot of trouble, today would have been a day to really kick it in a keister. Didn't happen. It was only down 4%. I think it could have easily been down 8 10% if they really wanted to. So the lows right now is what you want to keep an eye on. Below there, that is bearish. And how about another stock you guys ask a lot about? And it's followed you know, quite widely is NVIDIA, NVDA. This lost 7.6%. Remember, I told you guys to watch the red line, something we have not been able to close above. We did not get there yesterday. That's why jumping in early can be a bad idea. We filled the gap. We've actually closed below the gap. Target are back down eh, 135, 140 right now. And really quickly, just for some fun, I want to review the stock trade ideas that we went over last night. Because it's helpful, I think, to see when stocks are breaking out it looks nice, right? But what happens if you literally get in and of course in paper trading and then the stocks just reverse the next day, which is exactly what happened if we're following these stocks for fun with play money. Well, here is when nice volume spike. We closed higher today. What happened? We're just filling the gap. This is not terrible. An 8%, nearly 8% drop. If we get below the red line, that's a problem and that kills the breakout. So believe it or not, nothing really wrong with that yet. Does it hurt? Sure, if I was bullish. Here's Yelp, losing 4.48%. It got above the red line, but still above the blue line. Now, I might have said the five-day. Remember, the blue in is the eight-day in this video. But if I'm using an eight-day trailing stop, we're still above the eight-day, okay? And that's fine. If I used a five-day and we're a little below it, it's not the end of the world. But it's hanging in there. It's nothing bad just yet. How about AMD? We zoom in right on the 20 day, give or take a penny. We closed to 21.12, the uh, 20 days to 21.08. So we're four cents above the 20 day. We didn't break out above the 50, got real close. Pennies above we did, but we, it wasn't like a massive break. We're filling the gap. This is still okay here from a bullish technical perspective. How about Micron? Ticker symbol MU. You can see why I said we really want to get above that 50 day. Didn't happen. Stock lost almost 8% today. Still in a bearish channel. How about CLR? Nice pop on volume. And we give it right back. But we're still above the 8-day. So the 8-day works as a great trailing stop too. If I want to be bullish on CLR, it now needs to stay above the 8-day. It closed below the 8-day in blue. I'd want to get out. Again, always from an educational perspective. How about Cognizant? Because this one did barely close above the 50-day. It gave it right back. You're below the 8-day. You're right on the 20. Because these moving averages are basically side by side, you could say... In my opinion, well, if it gets below both, then I can get out. Well, the stock finished at 70.02, the 20 days at 70.02. Pretty much if it closes lower tomorrow, that nixes this one, and we'll just have to wait a couple days and maybe consider being bullish on them later. Again, in a virtual trading, paper trading portfolio, which is fake money, never real money. I'm not a licensed financial advisor, and I don't want to be one. I can't tell you what to do. So I hope you found that helpful, just reviewing some stocks here that we just talked about. Had bad days in some cases, yeah, we, someone gets stopped out. In other cases, it was just gap filling. 
no major technical harm yet. So again, the stock market is um, closed tomorrow in honor of former President Bush, and it's reopened on Thursday and Friday. So wish you guys a great rest of the week. And I'll be back in the next video, most likely Thursday night, unless there's some major overnight developments um, in the futures market later tomorrow evening. All right, take good care, gang. See you later.